Okay, really simple job today. Um, got the Schneider electric power meter, and I've got this broken actually. It's missing those uh, current transformer inputs there. They were apparently snapped off during installation, something like that. Unfortunately, they were not included, but they're snapped off anyway. I've got these, and uh, the spacing looks about right. It's a bit of concern about the current capabilities. Uh, does it say anything on them? Oh, 16 amps. Okay, never mind. Those would be grand. Um, yeah, because obviously it's a current transformer. Uh, it goes down to 5 amps on here, so I have to at least handle that. So yeah, I'm uh, going to install these on here. I'll show the assembly of this after, because oh, I didn't film the disassembly. But uh, it's pretty simple, just a few clips in here, it's got to poke them out. Um, yeah, very nice multi-stage design, nice header pins, very nice. Okay, I have removed the little leftover pins, sucked them out with the solder sucker, trusty TS101, does a good job. Uh, now let's install these little headers. Um, these are all salvaged, so they have a little bit of solder on them, on the tips, so I hope they will just slot right in. Oh yeah, at least that one does. Can I put them in one at a time? Uh, so yeah, let's do that. Okay, I've got one in there. Um, well, it's got a bit of a... Because if you see these, they've got these little interlo interlocking lug things that they kind of slide into each other like that. And uh, oh, there's actually a, a little V groove. So oh yeah, so they actually lock in. Okay, that's nice. Um, but yeah, this one's got looks like it's taken a bit of a hit there. So I need to just sort that out with a knife. Give it a little bit of a trim. Yeah, that looks good. Now we should be able to get one of these. And. Slot them in. Oh yeah, just like that. There we go. Solder that one in. And follow up with the next one. I had to turn the iron up to 380 because uh, see all of that? Those are whole high current traces there. And it all just sinks away all my heat. So uh, yeah, I'm only running the uh, TS101 on a 24 volt power supply so uh, it doesn't really have all its power I mean this thing should do 90 watts uh, with its USB-C power but yeah maybe I'll look into that at some point there's other spare power bits laying around so why not let's see how these ones go though Good. Yeah, I'll give it a little push down. Yep, looks good. Let's get the next one in. Letting that solder wicking wick in, in the yeah nice next one trying to burn myself on that. Oh yeah, right in. Solder that lot up.
Yep, tidy. Okay, I guess now this thing can be assembled. This is the part where if you've got one of these yourself or a similar power meter, um, obviously you'll be able to do the same thing. Got this at a very good price, obviously retail these are quite a lot. So I'm very happy with it. And you'll shortly see what this thing's gonna be going into. Yeah, that just clips in, comes out just like it goes in. Uh, you got a clip there, clip there, clip there, clip there, and a clip there. These two are a bit tricky because they're right next to each other. A bit hard to get those out. Uh, but yeah, as we see, all those connections on there are like they should be. Let's get the next part in. Important to make sure that shroud's in there. And obviously get these header pins to line up in there nicely. Might be able to slap that in first. Yeah. A little bit easier to get it in, to hold it by something. Oh, I think that's in. A little push. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's in. It's got to be a bit careful when taking this apart as uh, obviously a few SMD components around. You don't want to clip one of those when you're pressing down on those little lugs. Also, you don't want to snap these ideally. Yeah, that is in there like it should be. And now the last component display. Same thing clip, clip, header pin. I'm not even sure if this thing will work on single phase as that's what it's going to be used on. Uh, haven't even plugged it in yet. I guess uh, don't plug it in, take it apart. But I've got to see if it works. Um, the one big advantage of this is it's separate power supply and separate measuring inputs. Uh, a lot of the meters I looked around for, um, obviously affordable ones, if you go on RS you can find whatever you want, but yeah, I mostly shop on AliExpress. Uh, yeah, none of them had a separate power supply and separate metering input, which is very nice. Obviously it's got three of them in neutral, so you could have a uh, three phase on this. And it's got a whole bunch of logic stuff as well, which is a very interesting. I like to play around with that. Obviously in my application I don't think it's going to come in useful. But it would be cool to play around with it. RS-485 as well. Very nice. Let's plug it in. Okay, the setup here is pretty simple. Um, we've got the main input power coming in here. Um, that goes splits off into the meter voltage measuring uh, as in V1 into there. Uh, then it also ties off into this plug here So obviously neutral goes directly in and then we've got the live going through the CT and then into there very securely held on with these clips um, The CT outputs are put into here into I1 uh, We've got the clamp meter here to test against this see if it's all working right obviously these are the headers that I put in here. Let's see if it works. So let me power up the meter. Takes a while to boot up. There we go. As you can see I've been messing with it earlier. Uh, to set this thing up uh, we go into maintenance mode. Uh, set up. The password seems to be zero. That works. 
and then meter and then you've got the CT and PT I haven't got PT only a CT so this is a 200 to 5 uh, CT so that's what I've programmed in here but this will let you do anything up to quite a few decimal places uh, yeah that'll be quite a CT there but yeah I won't have any of that going today unfortunately uh, CT PT setup uh, frequency oh, I've got to set to 50 Hertz here uh, and the system this is the menu I was most happy to see uh, it will support single phase uh, let me just show you all the options so you've got single phase uh, two wire one CT uh, I'm not sure what that is it seems to be the same but I'm sure there's a difference um, three wire two CTs single phase also don't know how that works and then the yeah, three phase three phase and a four wire three phase but yeah this is what we're using um yeah that's that that's the whole menu uh, that's the demand settings um that's for some other more advanced shit here not what we're doing here password communications that's setting up the com ports and that board rate uh yeah we'll play with that another time uh there's an alarm on here i'm sure you can set that up to do something cool yeah there's not much more on this meter apart from what i've showed you um that's the info of my particular one um uh, yeah that is it let's plug it in i've got a hairdryer as a load connect to here um this will eventually be on the variac so there's a few things i want to investigate a few things i already found out about it uh, which i'll tell you shortly but let's first see how it works that's power voltage shows up as it should and then uh, you might not be able to hear me but i'll go through all the settings and you'll see the current jump so yeah that doesn't go up doesn't read under one amp get the heater on looks about right three amps Four lows. I see that voltage drop. Hmm, must be something to do with my electricity supply. But regardless, um, the one big issue is that it doesn't read under one amp, which is not ideal. Maybe I can play with the CT settings, uh, set it to like a times 10 multiplier or something. Uh, yeah, I mean 100 milliamp range would be ideal. Uh, also, maybe with a lower CT it will read, I'm not sure. Also, I can't change that from kilowatts to watts, which is also a shame because uh, uh, more time I'm plugging in sub kilowatt devices into this. I mean, it's still a cool device. I'm not sure if I'll end up using it now, but yeah, very, very cool. Also the programmability that like you can put any CT on there is just, just, just wonderful because there's a lot of uh, CTs floating about on eBay that are very highly rated that you know, can't use for most things like analog meters you can't really put a lower CT on there this is very nice universal but the thing I'll settle for is I think analog meters and a correctly rated CT you see this is a big old chunk of copper here it'd be good to do something interesting with it if you put a few windings on there you can probably get quite a nice voltage out of these terminals here Maybe we'll do something like that soon. But yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much.